Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't mean to be rude and interrupt this show or whatever, but I'm just tired of this girl keep calling my phone. She calling my phone, sending me messages, inboxing me pictures of her and my ex, talking about stuff. I'm jealous. Jealous of what we even do this together, no way. <laughs> you know what, y'all? She lucky it wasn't me back in the day, because I would have faced up my nights, pulled my hair back, and been at her dope. But you know what, that's the problem. We always going after the man when we, the woman, but we should be going after the man. Ladies, the man is the one that owes us faithfulness. He's the one painting this lolly dolly picture of happily ever after. But you know what, screw your happily ever after. I'm tired of this. I'm fed up with crying myself to sleep at night. I'm fed up with giving him half of me while he only give me parts of him, parts of his time. But y'all know what? See, that's when I revert back to the old me. Y'all know, back in the day when they used to call me Ro Ro, because I was brand new. Brand new. She brand new. Do it over here. Like, she don't know me. She don't know me. She don't want me. That girl can y'all get it any day. I ain't playing. Sure. Call my phone again. Let her call my phone again. Rosel. What are you doing hey, really? What's up? Who the hell is Keon? Listen, I don't, what's this about you getting knocked up? I don't know what you're talking about. You're lying, Pete. Now get up off me. You're lying. Ask me, Pete. You're lying, Pete. Girl, get up off me. Stop playing, bro. What'd you say? I said stop playing. I can't hear you. Sam, stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. I can't hear anything else about you and Keon. I'm going to kill you. You hear me? I can't play. You are such a lame, <laughs> baby. Man. Man, keep your hands up off me, girl. No. Chill out. Man, he got me walking around here thinking he loves me. But I do love no, you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I ain't meant to be in that kid's life. I already told her girl to drop my number. I don't plan on being that kid's life. I told you, it's me and you, girl. Please forgive me. Again? Yes. Dude, you got me walking around here thinking you love me. Dude. I could. I should've known there was something when you went out and got a job. Yeah. This nigga ain't had a job since I met him. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I don't plan on being that baby's life. It's just me and you, girl. Ride or die. Dude, if I find out you out here trying to take care of the same house, we done. We got a life study at all of this. Man, I guess you can say I'm caught up. Wrapped in my tied up, sold out to society's perceptions of a new age unholy maximum. Maximize my flesh, or my holy spirits, without what was left of me. Me, just a controlled vessel, stored up with the complicated testimonies that allows me to creep up in your room with minimal attempts to make you more than a piece of a one night stand. I left you standing there, waiting for me. When I ignored my mother's instructions to become more than just the destruction of the vows that went on to glory. But you make it easy. Born found the no need for a title, while you really crave to belong. So you go along with whatever or whomever provides you a few lines from your favorite love song. I got my eyes on you. You're everything that I see. I want some high love and emotion endlessly. Just can't get over you. You left your mark on me. I want your high love and emotion endlessly. How long will mockers light a mockery and fools hate knowledge? I stopped listening to the instructions of Proverbs when it became easier to act out. I approached you as a man, but your thirst to be loved too fast made it easy for me to treat like the quick kid that you commented on social media about. Same naked photos you hashtag whores, I have some of you store. And just because your privacy settings are set to high, doesn't mean that you are not the same freaked out Christian with secret acted out fantasies that your love life can't hide. You got so addicted to being disrespected that it became a part of human nature for us men to no longer have to date you to meet you. But far beyond these scars and infidelity, and far beyond the alarming sounds of morals being buried six feet under represents the real truth that in the beginning, my was exposed to create me a helper, my soulmate, my queen to my kingdom, which remains powerless without 
that touches my woman. Not seeking some hourglass perfected figure or the one who offers me everything on my ring or her finger. I pray the woman fragrance simply for me and not for her as I pray for her like a delicacy. A perfectly framed picture of God's love for me. Capable of unraveling this mess that was buried in me. Spinning my nights in sheets that don't belong to me. Deep beyond far what it seems, I crave a woman to kidnap me from my sins that has me burning from within. Tired of screwing up my soul with random women that I never want to see again. But I guess I made new friends to the end. And I try to wait for you to wait for you to realize your proverb's worth and make me fight for you again. See this? This is thicker. Give me all your scholarships, loans, and menial handouts. Because I'm sick and tired of selling dreams to babies who need to be sewn back together again. I don't think you understand. Let me clarify for you. I am a teacher. Scratch that. I am a teacher of teachers not yet realized because learning is a process. But we are forced to feed nonsense in order to maintain the status quo. Status quo. People whose lives have already been paid for by property taxes you've been forced to cough up. Now I'm no flaming liberal. I just interpret the literal. Because while I teach the world through the words, you tie my words to empty bank statements, calling it a statement of the crisis in education. But somewhere in a block in West Philly, my kids entered and exited their neighborhood prison routinely. Monday through Friday, they traded their uniform for a number, kept in order by correctional officers and dream killers. And the system has zero tolerance for the ignorance that the inmates are bound to bring. Because after all, we're trying to plant seeds to grow green grass and get rid of the weeds. But we traded books for AKs, nostalgia for Emanuel Labor Days. See, while you allocate your tax based on performance gaps, my kids fight to come to school just to avoid six feet under. Eight to three is a haven, a demilitarized zone fighting a war against possibility. See, this is a stick up, because money for the common good don't go to money for the common hood, because we still waiting for Superman. But I've got super fans cheering me on every day at 1033. See, my kids know the difference between a hero and a hypocrite and will stop at nothing to distinguish between the two. And I want every dream they've ever dreamt, every penny they've ever spent, every note to your passion and try to defend to be worth that fight. So I will ask you again to put the change in the back. Should I? Cause you clearly ain't give a damn about it. All you did 
did was sit in front of that dirty ass window with them same fingerprints from three Christmases ago. And that same dirty ass bowl stank with your miserable ass tears. And I tried to make you smile. I did. I used to bring you home things I colored, straight home A's on every report card. But you never smiled. I even tried cleaning the fingerprints off the window one day. You start hollering and screaming like your fingerprints was gonna bring him back. Hold up. You still waiting on him to come back? Cause it's like, when he left, you left the pieces for me to clean up. It's like, he left and you stopped loving me like it was my fault. Like we both ain't watch him leave out that window. You remember I used to play with my Barbies in front of that window? and daddy would come home and bring me a piece of that bazooka bubble gum, he used to always say, baby girl, ain't nothing in life free unless it's coming from me. How was this princess? You remember that mama? He used to make us so happy. Maybe that's why you ain't care about his bad habits, huh? Cause you, you used to scream the same way Miss Kathy did every time she used to come over and ask for a cup of sugar. You remember how the fingerprints got there? Cause I do. It was 11.47 p.m. Christmas night. You said you had to go to grandma's house and daddy worked at Thiller Wheel. So I needed to stay home and take care of them. I was 10, I could do it. Not a second after you left, Miss Kathy came ringing the doorbell with her same old question. Y'all got some sugar? I lied like no, she brushed past me, perfume smelling up the living room. Daddy called down the steps, Kathy, is that you? Yeah, it's me. I watched her tiptoe up them steps in that black trench leather coat and black high heels. Daddy came down the steps, gave me a piece of that bazooka bubble gum, went to the kitchen, came back out with one bottle of wine and two glasses. He told me to wait and look out that window and if you came to call his name. I wanted to be a big girl, so I did it. I sat and I waited. I stared and I waited. And I just tried to block out Miss Kathy screaming my daddy's name as he fucked her. And that's when I knew he wasn't giving her no sugar. Somewhere in there, I must have fell asleep. Cause I remember waking up from you slamming the door and it was too late to call daddy's name, so I, I just acted like I was asleep. And you came over and put a cover on me. And I watched you tip to up the steps. And then it got quiet. Robert! And Miss Kathy yelled your name, and daddy yelled your name, and then you fell down the steps and your hands around Miss Kathy's neck. And mama, no! Stop! You gonna hurt her! And daddy was on you, and the neighbors must have heard, because I saw the towers through that window, and they came in, and they told daddy to stop, and he wouldn't. Boom! My daddy lay in front of the window, dead, in front of my window. And I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. And I know it's my fault, mama. No. And I know I hurt you, mama, and I... Shield those souls who are afraid of the process. 
So they process their head in hopes that their minds can process their identities like hopes that broken locks will heal broken blocks with simple multiplication. But we've all got skeletons in the closet and we are running from them hide and seek style like child's play. But our roots rage war and our scouts begging us to compromise on our half lives just don't let them gun down our follicles like genocide, baby girl. You've got to know the value of owning who you are because your essence cannot be caged. Our coils are our master plan. Our escape route from jail down existence. Our resistance to identity wipe out. Colorblind eye for an eye gouge out your twists. Wrap miles around you can't ignore this. Around a tainted blood colored fantasy. Because your head is passed down centuries of beautiful. Characterized by a mixture destined only for you. Don't let them take your crown. Make you bow down to straight and narrative disguise as neat and manageable. We've been manageable for over 400 years, and frankly, I'm tired of being society's neatly folded secret. Your name is the punctuation on their statistic. Your follicles pose problems for their piecemeal handouts of equality. They're at peace without a piece of pie at the table. Don't let them offer you a meal and leave without being fed and saying thank you for your company. Your coils allow progress to make room for other dinner guests we must humbly accept and rip 100% of ourselves because baby girl royalty must demand matters. But you must first see the queen when you look in the mirror. Tell yourself that she has the power to ignite a revolution, remove blankets of incarcerated memory, and stand up to chapter books with missing pages. And when you think you have written between the lines, fear nothing.